All right, so welcome back to class, everybody. As we can see here in front on my screen, I actually have something that might be of interest, of, that will be of interest to you. So this is a, a standard indicator definition. Now, this one I collected is for DFID. If you search on the internet, I'm sure you can find the USAID one. Uh, yeah, so remember I said you don't have to reinvent the wheel, okay, when it comes to indicators or your measures of change that you come up with, because there are already indicators that have been provided by most, um, what you call this, big um, donor-funded, donor-funded, um, yeah, donor funds. For instance, USA government, this is DFID, which is UK government, they actually have categorized indicators into different um, into different activities that you could conduct as your project. So for instance, those people who've been telling me about either you know education or health, for instance, if we took you to the education, all right, so for them, they actually were even looking at something like higher education, and then they were looking at the infrastructure when it comes to education. But I think, yeah, so right here, I think somebody talked about us, of them having a project to do with school feeding, okay? So education, and this is falling under participation, and the indicator is number of pupils benefiting from feeding programs by gender, subsector, pre-primary, pre uh, primary, so pre-primary, what they mean in our terms would be ECD, uh, primary and secondary. And this they have defined as an output level, level data. Now, of course, remember we have already explained to you in great detail that an output is just equals to in uh, activity, uh, so input plus activity. And normally an output is always um, indicated with number of, number of, number of, because it is just a result of the input of the activities you've conducted. So if you're going to do a school feeding program, one of the indicators we expect to see is how many children are you going to feed? So if you ask a donor for 200 kwacha and you say you want to feed two children for a whole term, okay, show us how many times did they eat coming from that 200 kwacha a term, all right? So there we go. Now, what about an outcome indicator? Remember, an outcome indicator is always showing some kind of level of change. So an outcome indicator is one that you'd expect that says outcome. Okay, outcome. There we go. It's showing some kind of change. So for here, this outcome, for instance, here is over, over or slash under age enrollment ratio. So you're doing some kind of analysis when it comes to a short-term change, all right? So if we were just saying um, number enrolled, it would be an outcome. But when we say over or under age enrollment ratio, then it becomes an outcome. So remember, um, you'll be collecting obviously our output data outcomes data so this is just an example for somebody who was talking about school feeding yeah even here an output indicator the pupil textbook ratio if you how if you and simply you, you collect you need to know how many pupils are in the whole school how many pupils are in a class and how many textbooks do the children have as compared to yeah the number of uh, of textbooks so it's a ratio so it's showing some kind of change because maybe your interest is to to see whether this ratio increases to a certain threshold because you provide textbooks in the school depending on your project so whatever kind of indicator you are probably wanting to to measure there is actually an existing template of in indicators that have been agreed okay so you can just adopt them for yours onto your project they have to be relevant however so this i will share with you so it would make your life easy this is the different one uh, i can also find you some usaid ones on health or an hiv and i'm sure if you were to google search it you'll also find so i will include this for you so that you'll be able better much be able, better able to to collect but remember with DFID, they only show your in output and outcome indicators because that impact, the long-term change or goal, you really don't achieve until after the life of the project. So you won't be achieving it until your project is ended. So within the life of your project, what you will achieve are outputs and outcomes. All right. So here is an example of just one element, but whatever it would be, food, agriculture, conflict, governance, water and sanitation, they are also there. Okay. So, um, 
I look forward to seeing some of your indicators today, some more people giving us examples of indicators, and we look forward to seeing your logical framework that you're going to present to us is in the class. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.